You acknowledge that you've been accused of and arrested for robbing women. Yes. You acknowledge that you are the same person referred to as Tick in the song by Young Thug entitled You in the verse She Getting Robbed by Tick. Yes. The trial of rapper Young Thug is about to begin. Law and Crime Network executive producer Kathy Russin comes on to do a deep dive on all that we know and what has happened in this major case. Welcome to Sidebar, presented by Law and Crime. I'm Jesse Weber. All right, let's talk about the trial of Grammy Award winning rapper Young Thug, which at the time of this recording is about to start jury selection. This is down in Atlanta, Georgia. The rapper, whose real name is Jeffrey Lamar Williams, is facing eight criminal counts, including conspiracy to violate the state's RICO or racketeering law. Essentially, he and what or was originally 28 other defendants, although that number has been whittled down to, I believe, 14 now. I'll explain why in a minute. They were all charged in this large sweeping indictment. The claim is that Williams co-founded a street gang called YSL, or Young Slime Life, back in 2012 that absolutely wreaked havoc on the city. Now, we have people charged with everything from attempted armed robbery to murder There is a lot to unpack. There is a lot to understand, and there's a lot to break down in terms of what this case is, what has already happened. So to help me, I want to bring in a very special guest, somebody who has been following this case very closely, someone who the Twitter community has now dubbed Young Russ, Law and Crime Network's executive producer, Kathy Russin. Kathy, great to have you here. I'm not going to call you Young Russ, even though I do like that name for you. Uh, I mean, who would have ever thought this is where I would land? (laughs) <laughs> how far you've come, how far you've come. So I think it's good to start with giving, I, I gave a brief synopsis of what this case is about, but can you tell us basically, generally speaking, what is the allegation against these defendants and specifically Young Thug? Um, for Young Thug himself, not only participation in a criminal street gang, but being a leader slash founder slash in the management part of the street gang, to further crimes as in murder, Um, a sweeping indictment basically to get all of these members of YSL or at least 28 of them um, charged with various crimes. And Jeffrey Williams is kind of the lead and the head of that. And so his, his charges really have to do with furthering the criminal activity, like promoting it, that kind of thing. Are you tired of all the ads on the sides of websites? You know exactly what I'm talking about. I can't tell you how many times I get targeted for hair product ads. What are they trying to say? That my hair isn't perfect? Is that what they were going at right now? Well, these ads, they target things that we like because our IP addresses are public. Any website you visit knows your IP address and where you're coming from. But if you get a VPN, specifically NordVPN, you can mask your IP address. No more annoying ads. No more annoying hair product ads. I can get my confidence back. You can now shield your data from snoopers and cyber attacks. So what you do is you get NordVPN at nordvpn.com slash law and crime, and you'll receive NordVPN's two-year plan plus four months free. Again, that's at nordvpn.com slash law and crime something else it is risk-free with nord's 30-day money-back guarantee what is the main defense been because i've seen it's been what that this is not a street gang at all so he claims this is not a gang that he's a he's a musician is an artist and young slime life is is uh is not young slime life and that he has a record deal and he's not a member of a gang the problem is as we'll get into he's got some of his closest people that have said that it's a gang and that has started happening in plea deals. Defendant and his fellow YSL associates committed the drive-by shooting referenced in sections three and four above on behalf of YSL and to increase the notoriety, reputation, and fear of YSL. Number six, defendant admitted committing and was convicted of aggravated assault and participation in criminal street gang activity, among other charges, for his participation in the drive-by shooting referenced in sections three, four, and five above. Number seven, defendant was told by another YSL associate that immediately after the murder of Donovan Thomas Jr., YSL associates met at the McDonald's on Cleveland Avenue in Atlanta, Georgia, to discuss the murder. Number eight, defendant personally knows that one or more YSL associates committed the murder of Donovan Thomas Jr. on behalf of YSL. 
Number nine, on Jan January the 10th, 2015, after the murder of Donovan Thomas Jr., defendant and other YSL associates gathered at the home of Jeffrey Williams, AKA Young Thug, who gave defendant and other YSL associates cash money to lay low. Kathy, who is this sledge individual and uh, why is he so important? Um, well, he's going to testify. Now, in some of these plea deals, um, some of the defendants have been given the right to invoke the fifth and some have not, which is very interesting. He does not have the right to invoke the fifth on any statements he signed off on on his plea deal. Well, those include that after drive-by shootings, they went to Jeffrey William, aka Young Thug's home, who gave them cash money to lay low. That, that's, no, that's not a good fact for Jeffrey Williams. He's going to testify um, to drive-by shootings, to murders, um, after the murder of uh, rival gang member Antonio, um, I'm sorry, not Anten Antonio. Uh, Donovan Thomas. Thank you so much. After the murder of rival gang member Donovan Thomas is when he says that they went to Young Thug's house. Um, so he's very, he's very crucial to the prosecution's case of tying. Look, let's be, let's just be honest. They want Jeffrey Williams. The state wants Jeffrey Williams. That's where they're making deals with other people. They want the head, they want the lead, and they want him. And so here Sledge is going to testify, and it's not going to be good facts for Jeffrey Williams. Yeah, so he got 15 years probation. Uh, people might be looking at that and saying it's so lenient. I will be of the opinion that, um, like you said, they need several of these members to testify against the head of this organization, the alleged head. Or it could also be that the case they have against some of these members might not be as strong as they need it to be. And if you charge an entire, you charge 28 people and the cases are weak against some and strong against others, the whole case could fall apart. We've seen that happen before. Now that's a possibility. Let's go to Antonio Sumlin. What do we know about him? Yes. Do you understand that you are not allowed to possess or use a firearm while on probation? Yes, ma'am. Do you understand that you are not a United States citizen, a guilty conviction will affect your immigration status and will result in deportation, just like a conviction at a trial would, and that this is true regardless of any advice by your attorney or anyone else? Are you a U.S. citizen? Oh, yes, ma'am. Okay, so what do we know about Antonio Sumlin, Kathy? So Antonio Sumlin, a.k.a. Obama, is his uh, street name. He takes a plea, also is only just sentenced to probation. Uh, a lot of people are talking about these sweet deals these guys are walking out on. Um, could it be a sweet deal? Maybe. Can you... Can members of this alleged gang stay clean for 15 years and not violate probation? 15 years is a long time. So I hear, I see talk about that all to, on social media sites that prosecute that it could be prosecutors think that they're going to end up back behind bars at some point anyway. Um, so Sumlin uh, pleaded guilty to the RICO Act, which most of which all of them are charged with, two counts of conspiracy to commit a crime and participation in a street gang. And he also will testify. Now, these ones that, I, again, like I said, the ones that will test. Now, I have to just say this. The prosecutor words this very interesting. When, when she reads out the plea deal, it's if you are called to testify at any time. I, I will say that we don't have any guarantees that every single one of these people that took a plea will be called to testify. Um, and we do know that some probably won't because at least one has been given the right to invoke the fifth, as far as I could tell on everything. Right. So there's Quantavius Grier, who I believe is the brother of Young Thug. He pleaded guilty last week. Um, he was sentenced to a mix of time served and probation. Um, I, he, I think as part of his deal that if he's called to testify, he has to testify truthfully, but it is his right to invoke his Fifth Amendment um, a right against self-incrimination. So he can do that if he wants to, uh, not an option for some other and uh, defendants. The difference in his wording is like what you just said, that for some of these others, the, they, can, they cannot, the wording was you, they cannot invoke the Fifth on any statements in this plea deal. So they have written out statements that they've initialed, so typed out statements, whatever, that the prosecutors have them initial. They have testified truthfully to those and are not allowed to invoke the fifth. And then we have Trontavia Stevens. 
You also acknowledge that on October, excuse me, on February 4th, 2021, you participated in a group chat with fellow YSL founder, Jeffrey Williams, AKA Young Thug, and YSL Associates, Wooney Lee, AKA Slime Life Shorty, wherein Jeffrey Williams stated, YSL rule the work, world kid, y'all just start bringing me the money, man, y'all stop playing with me. Do you acknowledge that? Yeah. Do you acknowledge that on May 13, 2021, you participated in another group chat with fellow YSL founder Jeffrey Williams, a.k.a. Young Thug, and YSL associates Martinez Arnold, Miles Farley, Quantavius Greer, Antonio Sumlin, Mooney Lee, where Jeff Jeffrey Williams asked, y'all ain't beat him up or shot him yet, then states, y'all get us off. Yes. So Trontavious Stevens seems very important for this case. Uh, that's There's a problem. They have group chats. They have group chats that Jeffrey Williams is in saying things like, you haven't shot him yet? You all are getting soft. Um, that's what I guess people would call receipts. The prosecutor has receipts in this case where they have put things in writing. Here's another thing about um, Stevens, his uh, AKA Tick. He goes by Tick or Slug. There's a song, Jeffrey Williams has a song called You, but it's E-W-E, -E, I believe. And in that, it talks about Tick um, robbing a woman or women. And in the plea deal, the prosecutor has him acknowledge that he has been accused of and are charged of robbing women in the past. This is important because prosecutor wants to bring in song lyrics. The song lyrics that Young Thug has used, this is a big sticking point, and it's still an outstanding motion by the defense that has not been solved yet because they went to argue this motion last week. And as a side note, there was a COVID outbreak in the jail where all these guys are, and a bunch of them are COVID positive and or in quarantine. So because of that, they couldn't have this hearing on the motion. Song lyrics, can they use song, is song lyrics real life? Or is it just artistry? And it, but they are tying this specific one with tick to the song lyrics about at least committing a crime of robbing women. Yeah, even people in the hip hop community have been very against using rap lyrics in criminal cases. But uh, Fannie Willis, who is the district attorney for Fulton County, Georgia, says if you decide to omit your crimes over a beat, I'm going to use it. Um, let's move on. I want to go to some another important individual in this case who, and just to give everybody an idea, Martinez, Little Duke Arnold, Wunny, Slime Life, Shawty Lee, uh, and then Walter Murphy. They've all pleaded guilty as we've been talking about people taking these deals. But now let's talk about fellow YSL rapper Gunna, whose real name is Sergio Kitchens. Kathy, he has an interesting role in this case too. And do you acknowledge the following statement? I recognize, accept, and deeply regret that my talent and music indirectly furthered YSL the game to the detriment of my community. YSL as a game must end. Is that your statement or acknowledgement? Yes. So he took an Alfred plea. He's probably the most famous next to Williams as being known. Um, he took an Alfred plea, which means that he does not admit to being guilty, but he admits there's enough evidence that a jury could find him guilty. That's basically what an Alfred plea is. And he's came out and said, I did not snitch. I will not snitch and I will not testify. In his plea, he does have the right to invoke the fifth. So I would say it's likely he's not going to testify. However, we have his statements made in court. They were recorded by WSB. I'm not sure he knew that was happening because there wasn't a traditional camera set up. It was sort of a last minute hearing. And so the WSB reporter, I believe, did it with his cell phone. And you can find that on YouTube on WSB. But it has him admitting to certain things. And this is what he's admitting. He acknowledges that YSL is a gang. Number one, important. He acknowledges that some members of the gang have committed crimes. And in his statement, I quote, he says, I recognize, accept, and deeply regret that my talent and music indirectly furthered YSL, the gang, to the detriment of my community. YSL is a gang and must end. That is a statement from Gunna that he signed off on. Um, I think that 
I think he didn't know that that recording had happened when he made statements. I don't know, but I think it's pretty evident that I don't know how Jeffrey Williams can claim YSL is not a gang when now we have multiple members of YSL that are close to him saying it's a gang. Real quick, Kathy, what, what's the value of him if he's not forced to testify? I mean, what, I, think, I think the case against him might have been weak. That's what I think. Correct. He only had he only had the one count, the Rico counts. So that's the top count. The Rico counts the top count. All twenty eight are charged with that. There are some that are only charged with that and nothing else. And Gunna was one of them. And so they mu- it must have been a weak case against him. Now talking about people who take deals, we saw at least one person being offered what seemed like a really good deal. And turned it down. I'm talking about Tenquarius Mender, a.k.a. Nard. What can you tell us about what deal was offered to him and, and this rejection? And I'm sure that Ms. Fagan, she's a very fine attorney. I've seen her work. But trials, there, there's one thing about trials. It's uncertainty. You don't know what's going to happen. So you got to beat four counts. If you don't beat them, what will happen is, under this A&C recidivist statute, I have to, under the law, sentence you to the maximum sentence. And then whatever I sentence you to, you serve to the the door. That's not anything I have any discretion over. It's not anything because I don't like you or because of what you're being charged with or whatever. Those have nothing to do with anything. That's what the state of Georgia, the legislature, has mandated that I sentence you to. So one of the things a plea does is it, you know what you're getting. It caps your exposure. So, and what the state's telling you today is if you take the plea today, this is what you're going to get, and this is what I probably sentence you to, and you're done. You've got to decide that for yourself. You can't be worried about any of these other folks that are attached, attached to this indictment. The last day of, here, of pretrial hearings last week, the prosecutor stood up and said she has three more plea offers on the table. One was to Tanquarius Mender, AKA Nard, AKA Stunna. He is facing a maximum of 50 years, 50 years in prison. His offer was leave today, 16 years to serve one year, which be commuted. So he would have 15 years on probation and could walk out. He would not take the deal. And the judge sounded shocked. Why do you, why do you think he turned it down? I don't know. I mean, I think people are shocked that some of these guys have taken a plea. I don't know if the whole, you know, snitches get stitches thing. Um, Members of a gang don't turn on each other. They don't talk. I don't know if he's standing strong in that. Yeah, because I think that's why the judge said to him, you know, you can't do it because of other people who are in this indictment. You have to do what's right for you. But and we know that Durante Bebby, I might be saying his name incorrectly, A.K. Bay, he faces a life sentence for his crimes. And there was talk about whether or not, he, I mean, he seemed to still to reject the deal that was offered to him too, although he's kind of on the fence about it, right? So he reject. okay, let me just tell you that I want, I'm not going to say we know 100% sure about Bebe or about um, Mender because, well, this is what we know. The prosecutor said she has three plea offers. She said they expire at the end of business today. She was very clear about that. The judge had all three of these guys go back and talk, and there was like a two-hour delay or something in the hearing. At the end of the day, they came back on the record and only handled the one plea deal. So that's it. We never heard another word about BB or Bebby or Mender. So we have to assume they rejected it because it was off the table at end of business day, and they ended court around 6 p.m., and those two never came back with a plea. Now, Bebe was offered... 20 years. He's, he's facing 90 years. Faces life, no, sorry, life plus 90 years, okay? Forever. He was offered 20 years, but only served six. If you're facing life plus 90, and you were offered six years and you turned it down, it's shocking to me. So I don't know if these guys just think this case is going to fall apart on everyone or what is happening, but the- or their reputation, you know, they I don't want to. Sometimes that's more important, I would guess. I guess. And talk and talking about reputation, somebody uh, did something kind of interesting in court. We were in the middle of, I believe it was Young Thug's attorney making an argument about evidence and whether or not. <laughs> I don't even know how to make a joke about this. Something happened, Kathy. What happened? Well, as we know, in the world of 
COVID and post COVID, there's a lot of Zoom hearings going on. And this is true in this case, there's some people in, in person, but there's also a Zoom. And some of the attorneys and then attorneys partners and whoever else are allowed to have the Zoom link and can be there via Zoom listening in on the hearings. And it's on a monitor and it's on a laptop on the lectern that's in, that is where the attorneys stand. And as he's talking, there's some pornographic stuff that starts going on. The Zoom. And it's, a, it's free young thug, which, you know. And it's very it, graphic. And yes. you can see we blurred it. You can find it on our YouTube page. Um, it's that you don't see a close up or anything because it's like the screen that's in front of him and the camera's on the other side of the room. But um, as we know, we've had, there were a lot of Zoom hearings that were bombed like that during COVID. Um, and so somehow that happened. And the only reason it got brought to our attention, because like I said, it wasn't that noticeable. It wasn't like the camera was right on the Zoom, except the judge said, um, that's it. We are creating a new Zoom link. Attorneys, listen to me. That is only to be given out to attorneys in this case. That's it. And so I was like, wait, what just happened? And we had to rewind and figure out what had just happened. Oh, and we saw it. We saw it. Um, now, just to give you an idea, this has all been happening even before the trial started. The trial is going to, they say jurors are going to be on that for six to nine months. They sent out 600 jury summons. They get paid $25, hours a, day, $25 a day. It's going to be tough to see if they can even, what kind of jury they'll ultimately get. But we will continue to follow this trial here on Law and & Crime. And I know that if you want up-to-date updates about what is happening you can go to kathy russen on her twitter to follow the latest young russ thanks so much for taking the time thanks jesse and that's all we have for you here on sidebar everybody thank you so much for joining us please subscribe on apple Podcasts, spotify youtube wherever you get your podcasts i'm jesse weber i'll speak to you next time